Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. Don't suffer your life, create your life. Learn the tools, processes, and ways in which you can have your life change in dynamic, amazing, and profound ways. Visit accessconsciousness.com to find out what magic is available for you today. Hello, everybody. Welcome forward to Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere. I am super excited for this extremely potent podcast today. I am joined by my father, Gary. Hello, everybody. It's, and it's so nice to talk to you. Well, I was I actually tried to record another podcast on my own. Technically, it only recorded the first 15 minutes of it. And I was like, that's interesting. So I took that as a indicator to potentially have a different conversation and something really massive that I wanted to tackle that I felt like, quite frankly, I need your help with is the topic of control. Well, it's a real interesting thing at this point in time, because there's so like the majority of the governments and all of us have seen in the last year all the control that's been created around COVID. Now, I thought it was very funny that they talked about this terrible pandemic, and only 0.05% of the population actually dies from it. Now, the last time they had a pandemic in the world, 27% of the population died. Now, that, I would consider a pandemic, something you need to panic about. But when you have like 0.05% of the population dying, it's not quite as invasive. As, as they're making, right, as it's as being made out, it out to, be. to be. But it's yeah. been an excellent justification for instituting more control. And control, yeah. control is not a newfangled spiffy device. It's been around forever. You know, it's like yes, we, I know. Con- control has always lurked in the shadows of all of our minds and been demonstrated through all, many of our actions and choices. And so control yeah. in and of itself is this interesting phenomenon. You said something, God, I actually even think you said it on another, on a previous podcast, you might've said it. You said you can't actually control anything. No. Can we talk about that, about how you actually, how control doesn't actually Well, work. I mean, it's like if, if you look at you know, the thing about with the COVID thing, you know, it's like you have to wear a mask all the time. Well, I see people driving in their cars with their masks on. It's like, why do you have a mask on in the car? You're alone. Now, in Tokyo... They run around with masks on all the time, inside, outside, upside, downside. But that's because it's about the toxins in the air. Now, they have more toxins in the air because they have a large number of their cars in a smaller amount of space. And so, yes, there is more smog, quote, unquote. But it's like we have this thing with the COVID that you're running around with a mask on as though that's helping. But... I talk to all kinds of medical people and they say, it's so crazy because it doesn't, you know, it's like those masks don't actually do you any good. They don't filter out much of anything. And, you know, it's like it makes you feel better, quote unquote. But if you look at all control is to make you feel better about being controlled. (laughs) All control is to make you feel better about being controlled. So can we talk a little bit about can we talk about how we control, like some of the ways in which we control ourselves? And well, well, you control yourself by believing other people's points of view. That's definitely one of the massive ways we control ourselves. I was that's having the a, biggest way. I was having a conversation with a girlfriend a couple of days ago, and it was she was having some. What was she? She actually reached out to me because she was having like what she thought was like panic attacks. But through the conversation, what we actually discovered was she was gaining access to like a whole new level of awareness and capability for her in her own universe. Yeah. And when, as soon as like, as soon as the doorway to having greater access to more energy, more ability, more awareness started to occur, she would immediately start controlling it down into something that she could understand or control. Yeah. 
that was one of the biggest things that you did for me at one point. Well, at one point, a trillion times, you would say to me, because I, because I've always been looking for greater, greater financially, greater productivity wise, greater awareness, greater freedom, greater creation. And, and I would get to these sort of stuck places and you would say, well, how much are you preventing? How much are you keeping this from growing so that you can yeah. be in control of it? Yeah, and the thing is, one of the things I noticed is that most people would rather control things rather than they would be rather be controlled and control things rather than being aware of what they could create that would be different or greater. Do you know why that is? I the only thing I can assume at this point in time is they choose that because it feels like quote unquote to them that they are actually going to have more control by letting a, having a smaller life. And it's like, I got a kick out of it. I was working with a kid that is into acting and he'd been getting uh, callbacks for uh, auditions and stuff. And he went and got his hair cut and they, uh, you know, somebody suggested that he get a haircut like Patrick Dempsey. And it's like, all which is fine, except he decided after he got his hair cut that it was terrible, it was awful, and it was going to, you know, it's like he had lost all of his confidence. I said, so did you really lose your confidence or are you trying to create something different? And it's like he wouldn't answer me. I couldn't, wouldn't. And why wouldn't he answer me? Because at least he could use that as the reason and justification for why he didn't get any callbacks this year. And it's the beginning of audition season. So he really should have been just like going for it and working wherever he could. But he was not doing that. He was trying to find a reason why he couldn't succeed. So looking for a reason for why you can't, is that a form of control? Yes. It's one of the ways you control the universe so that you don't have to step up to being more than you currently are. Right. So that's a lot of what control is. It's to not step up yes. to being more greater. Yes. Mostly that's why people do control is they don't want to have to have a life that's bigger than they can, you know, Contr- they right. can control and understand as such as it is. I um, really saw that in myself so many times with running my own business and noticing that the business was growing to the degree that I had to hire more staff to handle the work, but I felt that having more staff was actually more difficult. And through many conversations with you and a lot of soul searching on my own behalf, I recognized that it was totally a control thing. If I brought on more staff, I would be less in control of the finished product And it took me, I'm going to be honest, it took me like four or five years to really work through that. And now I'm at a place where the people that I work with have autonomy to function independently and to do their jobs as they can. And what comes out of it is a level of productivity and ease that I never could have even imagined was possible without me controlling every single little detail of everything. Yes. And it's like, that's the problem is we think we have to handle called micromanagement. <laughs> uh, Tudisa Bowman wrote a great book called Conscious Leadership. And it's a hard book to read because there are no stories in it. It's all just flat out information. And the one thing, the one part of it that I found so dynamic was the fact that she talked about micromanaging. And people micromanage everything. They try to keep it to the conditions they can control. Control is the way you make sure that your failure is something you're okay with. Control is the way you make sure that your failure is something that you're okay with, as opposed to success, which you cannot control. I mean, and it's so um, amazing what's go. I mean, to watch what's going on with like globally right now is they're like literally there's this micro there's a global micromanaging occurring that I'm it like blows my mind how it's able to be instituted, but it's also interesting because I'm still been traveling around the world during this pandemic and to go to different countries and sort of watch how they handle the micromanaging and. Um, 
Yeah. Some some of the countries are really organized and really dead serious about it, and some of the countries just pretend. <laughs> they're like pretending that they're yeah. that everything's under control. Something that I've really been gifted with is the ability to succeed beyond control, which is a very yeah. well, powerful. Okay, you just said you just yeah. said the most important thing about this conversation. Yeah. To succeed beyond control, it's like if you can create and succeed beyond control, then you can actually go beyond what other people are capable, what other people are capable of experiencing. And that's on a personal level. Yeah. And every time that I come to, like, I'll use my work and my business as an example, because it's the place where I, to be honest, notice it the most. Although I think I do it probably in my really, actually, I do it in my, in my marriage a lot as well, too. But when I come to a place yeah. where I start noticing like think things are hard, this is always my indicator that I'm moving, I'm starting to resort to control is things yeah. start to get difficult. Like I start to get frustrated with a particular workflow or with a conversation or with a person or with a project or something. I'll start to get, it'll start to be hard. And that's my sign right there. It's indicating like I just went into a control path. And I, so now I stop. I'm like, oops, okay, wait, I went into control, which is familiar. Like I know how to do that automatically. Like control is old, yes. old hand, that's easy. But I'll stop myself and I'll go, wait a second. Where do I need to change my pro point of view here? Who do I need to hand this off to? What do I need to be different in this equation? Okay. What, what, what are you talking about? What is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. a question. So I ask myself a question to, and, I'll, and I'll basically change my action. And then within like a literally a second, the entire thing is different. But it's that quick now because I've exercised loss of control through You've exercised the muscle of not yeah. controlling. Yeah. So it can change quickly yeah. now, but I still have to question. I still have to pay attention to when stuff starts to get hard. That's when I know control is peaking up. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like your mother, her, she always had the point of view that the only way she got control was with anger. So she does anger every time she thinks something's not being controlled the way she wants it. She gets angry thinking that's the way to get her power over things and to have power over everything is anger. And okay, cool. Everybody does different things. Right. The only reason I brought that up is because it's people use different techniques. Exactly. You look at it and go, okay, this is getting hard, but you're willing to be aware of the hardness of it, where most people are not. So let's talk about the different techniques that people use for control because that's going to be very, I think, fascinating and eye-opening. So, yeah, so people, obviously, anger well, is like a really common form of control. Yes. Hysteria. Hysteria. My husband is hysterical the hysterical about something. My husband is the master yeah. of controlling through by, by going slowly. By withdrawing and going slower. Going slow is a form of control. Withdrawal is a form yes. of control. Pathetic is a, is a great form Pathetic, of control. Yes. Oh, it's a great form. And then there's silence. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> silence slash withdrawal slash stonewall yeah stonewall become a stonewall and then you are in, then you're in control because people will try to break down your wall to try and bring you into the conversation but they try to engage you in something thinking you'll come out of control where in reaction what they ought to do is go so how would you like to do this which by the way, is one way to get people out of their stuff. How would you like to do this? Right. Question. Question. A question. And it's like questions will do more to unwrap that place that people function from that's irritating to say the least. And a new beginning occurs. So that is actually the next question I wanted to ask you. What are some of the tips that you have, advice that you have, and ways in which you deal with other people being controlling? How do you get around with control, well, around control? With anger, it's like what I use is humor and tears. Mm. Humor and tears will usually take care of anger. I got to tell you, that humor one is so big. Like, I... I can't tell you the amount of stuff that you've changed in my world. And my husband also uses humor and Dane uses a huge amount of humor when people are being he controlling, with, yeah. when people are being controlling, like with their emotions and stuff, he'll make, he'll make a joke and it's incredible how quickly it changes the dynamic. So humor, that's yes. a great one. The humor. So it's like, 
you really want to, the thing is, what would it take to change this is the question you can function from. And then you'll do the humor, you'll do the tears, or you'll do whatever it takes. You know, sexual energy is another thing that changes a lot of things. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I use sexual energy when I'm with people who, you know, like are trying to do something that they think needs to be done in a particular way. And I'm going, okay, so what, you know, what would this look like? And that's where I function from. What would this look like? I wasn't trying to control this way. What would it look like? Can sexual energy also be used to control? Yes. Because that's an interesting one. Um, can well, you know, we talk in the classes about the five, you know, the five spots on a body that you can spark and in so doing, you know, you turn people on. And I've used it when I've given presentations with people that were just being jerks. You know, right. And it's like, okay, you're being a jerk about this, so now I'm going to, you know, turn your body on and do sexual stuff, and you're going to get all flustered. And they do. Which is awesome because essentially, which essentially what you're talking about is changing the energy, not yes. fighting it or reacting to the control. Yes. Not a reaction. It's not a fighting. It's just changing it. What can I do to be to change this? Because that's Hold the biggest. The universe opens up. That's the biggest key that you've given me. I have tended to react to control like so extremely yeah. i am somebody who does not like to be controlled to the point where i literally want to smash my gps because the gps voice is telling me like what to do i am so extremely do not i wish my gps would say would you like to turn right here rather than turn right here it's, so what, whatever it, it's never gonna do that <laughs> It's like I have such a strong response to being told anything. It's a very yeah. humanoid quality. And so I've really had to change, like to have more peace and yeah. ease in my life. I've, you have had to, I've really had to change from reaction into taking action about control, which is essentially what you're yeah. talking about. These are the actions we can it's take. Just, uh, definitely what I'm talking about. You know, you have to come out of reaction. If you function from reaction, then all you're going to do is play the same universe over and over and over again as though you're going to get a different result. You know, and it's like, it's very funny that you talk about your reaction, but of course you have no family members that are reactive to you. Yes. You know, it's like I was born on planet reaction. So reaction is, my reactions are very astute. Yeah. You know, it's like your mother was great at reactions. She did them all the time. And your biological father was great at reactions too. Well, and he did them all the time. It's interesting how control, I actually believe that control is designed to put you into reaction, which then is another is. form of controlling you. It is. Reaction always allows others to control you. Well, action always allows you to change what is. And so I've really used that because right now I'm currently, I'm on day six of my Australian 14 day hotel quarantine. And I had a lot of, I had a lot, (laughs) I'm making it work. I'm making it work. I had so much come up for me around coming to Australia to do this. And like, I literally put it off for like a year because I was like, surely this won't last. Surely this won't last. But it has lasted and my stepchildren are here and I literally haven't seen them in, it'll be 11 months by the time I actually get out of here to see them. And I was like, I have to, I just have to do this. So I was like, okay, how can I make this work for me? And the whole thing is controlled. Like the second you get off the airplane, you move into this control process where they process everybody and it's just very slow. And, but I was like, okay, no matter what, I'm going to relax. I'm not going to make this an issue. And I'm just going to stay like all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And to be perfectly honest, this process has been really ease, joy, and glory. It's just very slow. I know. Isn't that terrible? If you <laughs> ask for it, you get it. And so I can feel other people in the building sort of like going into their world, weird universes of stuff. And it's like I have to choose every moment to not react to the situation, but to take action. Okay, so what would I like to choose in this moment? Oh, yeah. okay. What, would I, what can I choose right now that would be fun? To be honest, yesterday was day five. It was like one of the best days of the year for me so far. I was like in such a good mood and I was so happy and I did some great work. And it was like, I was, 
So and it's sort of like people are like, how are you doing in there? And I'm like, I don't know. It's fine. You know, I'm like, I would like to be out of here, but this is, I will not allow this control to, to affect my life. That's great. You know, it's like, I just noticed that, you know, it's like you take a point of view and guess what shows up? Your point of view. So if you have an interesting point of view about it, and all life comes to me with joy and glory, it shows up that way. So why do people think the control is what will prevent disaster? Because they are always trying to avoid what they think is going to happen, even if nothing's happened. Right. So if it's you this spend pre- your life trying to avoid it, you're actually making it the power. Right. So we try to we can we use control as a way of avoiding the future because we've decided the future is this, that, and the other. Going to be X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Rather than all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory, and being open Past, to all present, of life, the future, and right. everything else. Yes. Yeah. Mm. With this kid that I was talking about, yeah, you know, it's like he got his hair cut so he looked like Patrick Dempsey. He was hysterical about his, his hair being cut off and now he wasn't going to be able to succeed. So I, yeah, I said, well, go get hair extensions. He goes, what? What's hair extensions? I said, they, it's where they add hair to where you want it. He said, well, how's that done? I said, I don't know. I just know they do it. I have all kinds of people I know do hair extensions. He goes, oh, okay. And it's like, so he didn't do that. He actually ended up getting his hair cut. But he was hysterical. He was crying. And then he told his grandfather about it. He told his his uh, sales rep, his... Uh, agent? One of those guys. Agent. His agent about it. And they both, you know, they both got on his father about how he needed to be put on drugs. And he needed to be sedated. And he needed to go in therapy. Oh my God. <laughs> because and of so the haircut. I, yeah. And I called him and I said, okay, well, this is a great idea. He said, do you realize that by sharing your hysteria about this stuff, you now have your, your grandfather wanting you to put you in a loony bed like your mother was in. Your rep now thinks you're completely psychotic and go off, can go off in a, in a heartbeat. And, you know, she's going to have a hard time repping you because you're no longer steady i said yeah you can you know put it down to that you're a volatile one that you know and all that kind of stuff but ultimately you end up they all think you're looney tunes what would it be like if you were not willing to make yourself into being a looney tune and it's like and he couldn't get it and finally he got it when he went they want to put me in a looney bin yeah i said and they want to put you on drugs So drugs would help you a lot because that would make it impossible for you to be able to do characters right away because you'd have to go through the drugs to get there. So what was the purpose of what he was doing? He was just being hysterical. Okay. Is that a reaction? It's a reaction, but he assumed he had no choice but to have a reaction. Right. So that's where he went into reaction rather than taking action to... Yes. Yes. Create and succeed he tried beyond. to gain control. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. He tried That's to create so... control with hysteria. Tried to create control. That is such a right. Yeah. Isn't that a? And it's it's so interesting. This the difference between controlling to prevent the disaster you've already decided is going to exist versus allowing all of life to come to you with ease and joy and glory, that allowance, it seems so weak compared to control, but it's like the magic key to unlocking the kingdom of the universe. Yeah. The kingdom of possibilities. The kingdom. Yes. Allowance is the key to unlock the kingdom of possibilities. So control is used to limit access to possibilities. Yes. Because if there are too many possibilities, you're going to want to quit. What do you mean? Most people can't stand infinite possibilities. They want limited possibilities so they can have limited choice. Like there was a restaurant I used to go to in San Francisco. You know, it's like they had a a 70 page menu. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I would go, oh shit, now what do I choose? 
I mean, I get it. Like when there's infinite choice, you have to sort of like, it's really funny too, because then you actually have to ask more questions and explore more and receive more and like choose more. Actually, no, you don't. But yes, you do. (laughs) Some people can't and won't. And those that can, will. Okay. Okay, cool. So with the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that simmer and twist everyone's universes. With, with what's know. going on, with, with what's going on in the world today, can you leave us with some tips, some questions, some energy yeah. about, yeah. Question the control that's being done on you and go, everything I created in any lifetime that allows this to be done to me, I can buy that. Cool. I love it. Like, because yeah. anything you've done in any lifetime that allows this hysteria to exist, get over it. I guess that that's another question, too, about how people believe that they don't have a choice about the controls. Yeah. No, they don't. From their point of view, they have no choice. So for those that feel that they don't have a choice about the controls, what would you say? I'd say you always have control if you choose it. And you always have creation as a possibility, but once again, you must choose it. What are you choosing? And the reason I used the example of the kid is he was making everybody think that he was hysterical and stupid. And it's like, you know, you create your future from that. Okay. So, and that thing about how you always have, you can always create and there's always possibilities. That's true. That is one of the yeah. universal, that is what's true in the universe. And it's the one question. One of the laws of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's the, and as soon as, it's, whenever you think you're like backed into a corner or you have no choice or there's nowhere to go, that's not really true. You just have to ask a question and see what shows up. And that's that, that's the gift of creating through question with bodies exactly. on this planet. So what if we could, what if all of us controlled for greater rather than controlled ourselves into less and recognize what control limits and what allowance could and would lead us to a greater possibility? Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. 